Okay, so next up we have Emma Roberts from the University of Chester, and she's going to talk about designing a connected experience with blended learning. Um, so over to you, Emma. Good morning. Thank you, Phil. Um, I hope my screen is sharing already. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, so yes, um, my name is Emma Roberts, and I'm a senior lecturer in law at Chester. Um, I just to note i can't actually see anybody on screen now so i'm just going to talk to my slides if that's okay phil maybe you can unmute yourself if i need to to look at something um so i work at the university of chester as a senior lecturer in law and what i'm going to talk about today is my take on the blended learning or the chester blend as we've uh, branded it at chester it's simply a, a whistle stop tour uh, as ruth uh, said earlier um, in, in the implementation of this on a level four law module of mine. And um, my take on it is that the key to getting the right blend, which I think we've all grappled with um, this year, with, with it being new to us all, is that we offer a connected experience to our students. There's quite a lot of literature on the connectivity of, of learning, of, of study and so on. Um, Dilly Fung in particular is key in this area. My take on the connectivity and the connected experience for the student goes perhaps beyond some of the, the more traditional um, definitions of this. And th this illustration on the screen right now uh, goes some way to explaining my view of it, which is um, I look to redesign my module with a student-centred connected experience, where the student sat at the heart of the design um, and I sought to have connectivity with the lecturers, with the wider law school, with other individuals across the university, as well as peers from different year groups. Also, in the design of the curriculum, I wanted to connect the students with the broader degree curriculum in this introductory law module in the first year. Also, uh, in embracing what we have uh, uh, taken on board this year, which is a citizen student strategy, I wanted to connect the students with the wider world, the learning process and the discipline. The comments on the right hand side of the screen there are some of the comments that came out of what I, I conducted as an, uh, an enhanced evaluation of what it was that we took from this module uh, and demonstrating that my approach to the redesign of the module to take it into the blended learning uh, was indeed a success for the, the, the purpose of connecting the students to all these uh, uh, multi uh, faceted areas. So um, what I'm going to talk about in, in a nutshell is how this was achieved um, and perhaps it's worth stating at the start my philosophy was in moving things to being and blended learning what I was really mindful not to do over the summer was simply to look to translate what we had done traditionally in the classroom onto online and my view of this is that we we must throw everything in the air and see where they land before then putting those jigsaw puzzle pieces into place to be able to create a, a, a satisfactory and a, a valuable experience for the students. So the context of, of what I'm talking about today is that the module is a legal foundations module. It simply lays the, 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 the background to how the legal system works, where the law comes from, how law is changed. And it basically forms the foundation of legal study, no matter what background our students are coming in from. It's worth noting also that our demographic is such that we have um, a, a broad range from students entering at A levels, some having BTEC backgrounds, um, also some mature students coming to law as a second career. And a, a great deal of our students who are mature students, of course, are um, balancing work and life, uh, which is a particularly challenging balance this year, as it is for my colleagues too. So bearing all this in mind then, I sought to redevelop this module, which had in the previous year been front loaded, so that students were entering in week one of their level four studies, and they were taking this six week module uh, with myself as the module leader, with assistance from some of my colleagues to lead on some of the seminar groups. Um, and this laid the foundation for them then to continue. And I know we have some legal academic colleagues in, in uh, presence today, 
So it, perhaps it'll make more sense to those. So it gives the foundation before they then go on and study some other substantive areas. So, for example, um, in, in layman's terms, studying how the civil justice system works aids their understanding then in studying how contract law works in, in that context. So my considerations in the redesign of this was that I took on board uh, the the, uh, the uh, strategies that underpin our approach to teaching and learning at the University of Chester, which is the widening particip participation strategy, the student staff partnership strategy, the employability strategy and the sustainability strategy. Taking all those things into, into consideration then, I was keen to develop a personalised online learning experience for my students. Um, one that allowed students to collaborate in, in um, social construction of their learning. One that was this time technology assisted even in the face to face so that I could capitalise on the way in which the infrastructure at the university had developed over the last year to allow greater use of technology, both in the online learning and in the face to face. At Chester, we were keen to have as much face to face uh, uh, contact time as was uh, permitted by the wider national rules and in, in what term that was possible. I was fortunate in that six week period where there wasn't any uh, further um, lockdown rules. However, there was in Wales and I myself am um, speaking this morning from the Isle of Anglesey, which is, is my, my uh, home, hence my accent. Um, and so students were in fact impacted in the weeks five and six because we have so many students coming in from Wales so some were nervous about crossing the border, although the government has said that education did continue. So back to my considerations in the redesign and, and what I was working on over the summer then. Um, I was keen also to have um, elements that allow students to pace their own individual learning so that not all the learning was about the contact time. Um, I was keen to have this flexibility because I was mindful that students had so many other um, uh, matters such as childcare or indeed caring for, for parents and others or even work commitments for our essential workers um, during the time of their learning. So that I was I was keen for them not to have to miss out. And one of the things that I had been dabbling with as such for the last few years was about implementing multimodal learning. And a bit like Ruth uh, uh, alluded to in the first uh, speak, uh, talk today, I was really glad to see that there was so much more availability to the, the tools and the, and the tech that made this possible. And I was able to, to optimize my understanding of how to bring this to fruition uh, when I was um, attending some talks over the summer. So I looked to, to implement um, all manner of things such as H5P on the Moodle site and so on. So on the, the, the left hand side are all the things that underpin my teaching in any case, but I was looking to bring these into the online learning community. So sure, making sure that it was engaging and memorable, inclusive and accessible, inspirational and motivational, reaching out to those students in their home learning spaces, giving recognition and reward, but also being mindful of the fact that we were thrusting these students into an environment with which they were unfamiliar. So I was keen to make sure and, and kind of uh, even the playing field because these students were coming to education after such a disrupted end to their, their end of studies elsewhere. So um, I was also keen to embed information literacy, reflective learning, collaborative learning and digital literacy onto the curriculum. So where this got me to in terms of planning this out was I looked at it as a triangulation between the provision of lectures and seminars which had already been in, in place in the previous year when we first experimented with this front-loaded model. This time I inserted also webinars but not in the way that we understand the term webinar and perhaps one of my own points of reflection is that I'll be renaming those in future. So uh, the lectures in order to be able to fit the content in I had six uh, hours of lectures in a week 
Um, I mixed these up so that some were synchronous, so that there was connectivity and that they were, we were all clamoring into the same virtual space of the morning, that there was some kind of structure to the week, but also offering asynchronous sessions as well that people could look at in their own time. And if they, they lagged behind because of other demands and, and perhaps even illness uh, during that period, then even the, the, the synchronous sessions were also recorded. Sorry, I've got about a minute left. OK, so um, so what we did in those lectures then was to ensure that there was connectivity. Um, so I would ask questions. I would link to other curriculum elsewhere. I would give thinking points, note taking boosters. So embedding study skills and also ensuring there was embedding well-being in giving them breaks as well. Um, I was also in the webinars designing Moodle lessons using the H5P interactive tools, ensuring that students came together in different areas. But importantly, I gave an incremental skill set here so that they were, first of all, replying and responding to posts on Teams. 77% there, so the, 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 the percentages indicate the level of their competence after these. In the second week, I had them create their own posts. Third week, unmuting their mics and then fourth week appearing on screen. The seminars took on the same form as the previous and these were the face-to-face -face element of the module. Unscheduled connectivity included things like Ask Me Anything chat thread, which was a scheduled response time, but then I had synchronous informal coffee breaks with them. And then I brought second year students, third year students, study skills advisors and learning technologists into those sessions to assist me in uh, embracing a wider, uh, wider university identity for these students. So the lessons going forward then for my part is how important it is to be yourself in front of the students. Students uh, noticeably made comments about the tutor's personality in the evaluation, which I think is actually something unique to this year. So it's good to see that that came across. Also being available to them in that learning community. So the Teams thread, I had one week, we had over 300 posts on one chat thread. So it brought in a sociable element, but it's important also that we retain our professional identity within that area because the whole lectern and stage has been removed. And in the online community, we are all on the same uh, 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 level. Also important to be creative. I. I absorbed the energy and enthusiasm of my students and kept coming up with new things, such as I created a game show uh, by the end of the module to get them engaged in the revision. Being encouraging is really important as well. And in this way, it, it, th it, it reflects on the students and they were very encouraging in one an of one another in the social and, and, and the uh, professional threads of chat outside of uh, um, contact sessions. Really important this year is to be caring and compassionate and showing that to the students on this public facing uh, platform is really important because once again, that's kind of sets the tone for other students to be that way also. Being inclusive, so I designed everything so it was accessible on, on tablets, on phones as well, bearing in mind um, digital poverty. Um, being supportive and again, being supportive in this, this connection is ensuring that other students are supportive of one another and showing leadership is really important not managing the situation but leading things forward so i had the students um, work with one another to create peer generated formative feedback and they also created co-created a revision tool and perhaps on that same spirit as being um just being is sometimes important too just being there being in the learning community, reacting to their posts because the students really like that level of very simple connectivity. Emma, I'm so sorry. I think we're going to have to stop you there to keep okay. the time. I'm so sorry. It's such an this, interesting presentation. This slide speaks for itself anyway. So the important thing, I think, is also to remain connected ourselves, such as today's events. That's my final word. Thank you, Phil. That's so nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to place, if that's OK, um, all of the slides up in the team after this meeting. So if you wanted to look at them afterwards, um, then you will be able to. Um, I just have one quick question, if that's OK, Emma. 
Um, in your in your previous, uh, I think two previous slides, uh, you said that you uh, you need to be available to the students, and yeah. that you're right. That's so important. But I was I was wondering, do do you kind of have any boundaries with the students as to to the level of how available you are? I mean, do the students expect you to be there twenty four seven or how is it you manage it's that? It's a really interesting question. I have to say, um, I was exhausted at the end of the six weeks. I was more <laughs> exhausted the previous week, uh, previous year, because I was physically running about the place and I actually was delivering eight live lectures then. Um, so I was exhausted, but it was such an invigorating experience. And I really do mean it when I say I absorbed their enthusiasm. Um, and so I was able to come up with these creative ideas that I never thought would be possible. In terms of availability, yes, I was available quite a lot. But one of the things my university implemented after the six weeks was that they had learning facilitators. So these graduate students coming in and helping. So I think it doesn't have to be the one person. It can be shared across a team. But because of the nature of this module, I just wanted to kind of take that lead and be available because um, I wanted them to be aware that I was the person that they were kind of that was most available to them, yeah. uh, if that makes sense. To be fair, they weren't. They, I, I set boundaries as much as I come across as being a person that is approachable. Um, I had actually had one student, a mature student, saying to me, "I loved the way that you know you came across and the way that you were there for us and so supportive." but we always knew where we stood with you. And I think that indicates the fact that I, I, I set boundaries without being negative. So setting yeah. boundaries whilst remaining compassionate and caring and supportive. Thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think I think everyone, certainly me, finds your enthusiasm infectious. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much for being here today. Uh, right, um, Emma, we have a few questions in the chat. If you could answer those, that would be so much appreciated. Thank you. On the chat thread? Yes. Yeah. Yes, very happy to. Thank you very Thank much you. for the opportunity to share today.